Hey, Benjamin, how are you doing? I'm good. I'm good. Thanks for the call. Yeah, no worries. It was a bit of a struggle to uh, start this whole recording, but uh, we're here. We learned something today. Yes, we did. So that's good. Nice to see you this morning. Yeah. How's you're in, was it Chi Thailand? Yeah, I'm in Bangkok at the moment. Um, oh. I've been in Asia, Asia now for, for three years. Mm. And um, I've been in Bangkok for two, sort of traveling in and out and touring and DJing and working. And uh, yeah. yeah. Oh, well, we'll get, we'll get into that afterwards, like uh, the reason why you move. But uh, let's start off with a, with a brief introduction for everyone who doesn't know who you are. Uh, where did right. you, where did it all start for you? So I have been a DJ for 25 years. Mm. I've been a pr producer for 20 years. Holy and shit. my <laughs> artist name is is Kid Massive. I have m many, many other side projects as well I'm working on. Um, I have another one called Wolf Crew. Okay. Um, different style, uh, different genre of music. And um, I love music and I've worked with many big labels, many independent labels, and I've toured the world. I still tour. And at the moment, I'm focusing a lot on my own label, Get Down Recordings, mm -hmm. supporting new up upcoming talent, focused on house music, tech house. And then I launched Get Down Black, which is more on the bigger room, bass house, okay. um, kind of groove house kind of stuff. Awesome. And I also run um, the Mindset Sessions, Mm -hmm. which is a um, it's a podcast but it's also a uh, teaching platform to help young creative people to sort of understand more about the choices that they make why they make them so I'm using my own personal experience as an artist but also using my interest in uh, you know uh, cognitive behavioral therapies uh, psychology yeah spirituality yeah. combining it all to give a bit of a, a different insight into yeah. the steps you can take to you know to understand what you want why you want it and how mm. to get there and why is that important to know because i i can remember from my time when i was still djing and didn't know anything about the whole mindset uh, mental health thing why is it important for an artist to know these things or to work on those things? Well, I, for me, being a creative is incredibly personal. It's all about me. It's mm -hmm. my journey. It's my expression. It's me telling you how I feel. You know, some do it through art. Some through, do it through painting, music, cooking. Yeah. It doesn't matter. It's, it's all different. Yeah. And the more you know about yourself, the stronger your identity will become. Yeah. And the more grounded and solid you will become in what in what you want to say. So, um, you know, we've both been there. Uh, I know a bit about your story as well. Mm -hmm. We get to a point where our confidence gets knocked. We're not quite sure what's going on. We start to, like, distrust our choices. We start to think, is this really what I want? Is this really blah, blah, blah? And we start believing other people we start believing that oh I, I have to do what they do and yep, you, you yeah you lose your connection to why you started something in the first place we all start something because we love it yeah but then Passion. people start yeah but then people start talking to us and saying well no you should do this or you should do that or maybe yeah. you start to think oh maybe it's just not good enough yeah so the more self-aware you can become the more in line and aligned you can become with what you really are yeah the stronger you will become and the less likely it will be that you will be shaken yeah. things happen you know mm -hmm. things happen you know we lose gigs and management you know th that's life that's life yeah that just happens but it's learning to not take it personally yeah. because it's not personal it's just something that happens but, but what i think is really interesting about the the whole mindset game is that if you don't know how, uh, like if you haven't experienced it, like if you know how to control it, it, it literally changes your life once you once you are in control. Like if I, the whole yeah. thing you just described happened to me completely. Yeah. I started trusting other people. Uh, I completely neglected my own opinion, which caused me to end up in some sort of burnout. Uh, but what I noticed in the last couple of years after educating myself, after... Uh, listen to a lot of podcasts or books or whatever um 
and now seeing it happening with other artists, what I notice as well is that it goes much deeper than just what a lot of artists think is that mental health only is useful once it already went bad, right? Yeah, yeah. But what I noticed is that it also is very useful, like, for example, uh, artists who are struggling with uh, releasing their music. Mm. Because you know, what you mentioned, it's their personality. The thing they've created is is uh, like an, an extra arm. Like, it's, it's theirs. It's their little baby. And yeah. that brings up so many insecurity, fear, all those kind of things uh, that they aren't aware of that, that, that that's actually happening, right? They just think, I don't want to release my song because it doesn't feel right or whatever. But they don't really know what the reason is why they don't want to release their music. No. And to me, those are the most interesting things about learning how to control your mind, how to control your thoughts, those kind of things. It can make your life so much easier. So much. Yeah. Absolutely. It's about connecting to yourself and understanding what's actually important. What do you value? Mm -hmm. But the most important question is why mm -hmm. do you value it? Why is it important? Yeah. What would happen if I take it away? Will you still do it anyway? Yeah. So um, I've reached a point now where I love what I do. I don't do what I do for anyone else other than me. Yeah. If I get a booking, great. If I don't, great. If I get my record signed, <laughs> great. If I don't, great. It doesn't matter anymore. Yeah. Because now my music has simply become a way for me to express how I feel. Mm -hmm. And to, to be honest, I actually sometimes don't make music because I don't feel like it. Yeah. I just I'm I'm not in the studio 24 hours a day. I'm and that's and that's okay, right? Like that that's and that's I think the small little thing that a lot of people forget in this whole sentence. You're literally okay with the fact that you don't release music for two months or three months or five months because it's a decision you've made and you're aware of that decision. And that's yeah. the, the small little what's the right word? The small little detail that a lot of artists forget when they hear a sentence like this. Yeah. And also, you know, I've, I've worked with, you know, like you, I've worked with a lot of the big labels. You know, I, I know how the machines work. I've done work with, you know, the big independents, but also the majors, Sony, Universal, Warner, etc. And in 2020, you have just a good opportunity of breaking a record as they do. If you have the right connections, if you have the right distribution network, if you have the right uh, know-how, you can you can break a record yourself. And I've known this for many years and I have very good distributions set up for my uh, for my music. So I actually make money with my music. Yeah. So I don't need to sign to other labels. I've been around for 20 years. People know my name. So if I if I send out a record, it says Kid Massive on it. If you happen to like house and tech house and Latin house, yeah. there is a big chance you will listen to it. Mm -hmm. But what this provides me is the. I can set up my own label. I can do it myself and I can control whenever I want to release. So I release a record once a month. Yeah. But it doesn't mean that I produce everything at, you know, once a month. Yeah. I might make, I might make four records in one go done. That's I'm, I'm done for the next four months. I don't need to think about it. Yeah. But, exactly. so I can just relax and enjoy the time and go, Oh, I feel like making music today and there's no rush. There's no deadline. There's no yeah. stress about having to put out a new record because I know I already have another four lined up on my own label. Yeah. But I think like that, uh, that relaxation that you get from that is that that also puts you in a position to be creative because, mm. because creativity most of the time only comes when you're com once you're complete, completely relaxed. Like if you're stressed, being creative when you're stressed is really, really tough. And yeah. it's also something you can't really force, as in I like to believe that there are certain triggers that you can use for yourself to become creative. Uh, and I'll explain it. Like I know for myself, if I watch music documentaries from other DJs, that's, that triggers something inside me. Like that right. gets that sparks up that little fire, right? So... I know if I watch a documentary, that's my trigger. If I need to make music after that, I will be much more creative than I was before watching that documentary. So I do believe you can 
trigger creativity, but I also believe that you need to be in a good mood uh, in order to become creative. Yeah, absolutely. The more relaxed you are, yeah, the more you just flow. Yeah, and, and because that's... It, it, Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, and, and it's super important. It's like, imagine this. Imagine that you're taking your entire body and you're stressing your muscles right now. You are not relaxed. And the, the mind does the same thing as the, as the muscles. Yeah. If your mind is constantly stressed, your body doesn't relax. It, work, it goes into overdrive. Yeah. And you're, you're stressing yourself out. So simply by letting, letting go of whatever issues you have, letting go of this and that, and you simply just say, you know what? I'm going to take time off. I'm going to let my mind relax the same way that you do when you unclench your muscles and you exactly. relax. Then the more relaxed you are, then you start to think, well, what do I enjoy? What do I like? Mm-hmm. Oh, I like this. Well, okay. Well, as it happens for you and I, we like music. So that's our natural, that's what we go to. Yeah. You know, yeah, that's true. And and with me as well, uh, this whole thing happened to me as well. Like you mentioned it, like the minute I decided to quit and started to create rest in my head, like a couple of months later, things started to become clear to me. But it took me months to empty the bucket because the, em- the bucket was just over flooding at that moment. Yeah. So taking the rest after a couple of months put me in a position to finally see things clearer. Um, and to make better decisions because passion goes where blood flows as in um, music is just in me it's just something that I don't know it's always has been there it still is it's just right now I'm using it in a different way but the passion is still there it was just gone for like a couple of months maybe even years because I started listening to other people and and stressing too much about things that didn't really matter in the end yeah yeah Uh, um but it's it, it's so amazing for me to see right now, a couple of years later, what the power of the mind does as an artist. And yeah. the fact that I've been unaware of that for like 10 years, that's just mind blown to me. Like why? Many, yeah, many people have. Many people, yeah. Yeah. you know, they, they go their whole lives yeah. without, knowing, without knowing who they are. Yeah. Without knowing what do you like? What do you value? What's important? What do you want to do? Yeah. You know, because because life is not just, you know, you're born and you die. There's all this space in between, <laughs> you know, and it's just like, well, are you going to do something with that space? Yeah, because, you know, there is no guarantee you're going to come back. So, you yeah. know, do you want to sit on your deathbed and go, damn it, I didn't actually do anything? Yeah. You know, because everyone's different. Everyone has their own way of expressing. Mm-hmm. You don't have to become the next Beyonce or the next Monet, Monet or you don't, you don't have to be the next superstar, but at least do something that makes you smile, makes you happy Yeah. because it's a ripple effect. It's like dropping a stone into a pond. Mm-hmm. It's, it spreads. If you do something you enjoy, people around you see that and they get inspired by you and then they start to think, oh, hang on, he or she's doing that. I can do that. What yeah. do I like? Exactly. And then all of a sudden, you can actually, uh, I, don't like, I don't like the word influence, you can actually change behaviors from people around you mm-hmm. by simply leading as a good example. Yeah, yeah, and, uh, and, 100% true. Like, yeah, like I mentioned, I've experienced it myself as well. So I totally agree with it. And I, to me personally, I think it's, uh, what's the right word? Like, it's just crazy to see how many people are in this industry um if we narrow it down to the music industry like how many people are in that and don't know these things and it's not like it's that hard to know right like there's a million books written about it there's a podcast right now which you can listen to you don't have to go to a psychologist to uh to to get to know this it can help but it's not the only thing you can do so to me it's just crazy to see that there's so um there's not many people talking about this subject in this industry. Well, I, I think that comes down to, well, if there's nothing wrong, why do I need to know? Yeah, but I think I, there I, is I, a I lot feel, of... I feel, I know, I feel yeah. fine. So therefore, you know, I don't need to. Yeah. It's, it's not until something goes wrong. Yeah, exactly. That's what they think. That, that's what, and it's like, oh, something's gone bad. Now, right, now I need to fix it. Well, yeah. you know, it's, it's like health. Mm-hmm. You don't, you don't have to be a gym junkie 
but you have to recognize that going to the gym is healthy. Mm -hmm. Even if you want muscles or not, it doesn't matter. The fact that you use your muscles and you use your heart yeah. will give you a, a longer life. It's logical. It's common sense. Yeah. But people don't see it that way. They see the gym as, oh, it's big gym guys and big gym well, girls. Boys, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's, it's that. But I'm like, it's not. The gym is exercise. Mm -hmm. Exercise means you live longer. Yeah. It's, it's as sim simple as that. Yeah. <laughs> That's but, just so weird. Like, it's so simple, but why is it so hard for people to wrap their head around it? Or maybe it's... Maybe there's a bit of fear behind it because it could be confronting to them. They might find things that yeah. they prefer not to find. <laughs> well, like, for example, I, I, I don't like nightclubs. Mm. I don't like bars. I don't go to nightclubs. What, what, I don't do, you, go to what bars. do you don't like about it? Well, for me, it's, it's exactly what you just said there. It's people go to clubs and bars to escape. Yep. Some 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 go to have fun. Fair enough. I'm not mm -hmm. talking about those people that want to just dance. And there are many people that are like Monday to Friday, they have really bad jobs. Yeah. So what they do is like, right, we're going to go and do drugs and we're going to drink and we're going to we're going to do this because they don't want to confront having to sit at home on a Saturday night and reflect yep. about how shit their Monday to Friday was. Yep. So exactly. the majority of clubs is full of people. I'm, I'm being general here. Yeah, yeah. It's full of people who want to escape. Yeah. They don't like what they have. Mm -hmm. You know, they work five days to enjoy two, but they only they only really enjoy one because on the Sunday, they feel they're stressing shit. about going back to work. And they feel shit because they're hungover. Because they're hungover. Yeah. So it, it, it's, it's like a, it's a bit of a, you know, it's a bit of a crazy, I don't know. You know, let, let me ask you this, because this was a thought I had when this whole quarantine thing started. I, I completely agree with you about the whole club thing and, and most of those people who stand there. Um, like, I when this whole quarantine started, I was talking to a friend of mine and I said, this is going to be a really challenging time for a lot of people. And he said, why? I said, because there's so many people on this planet who are seeking for constant... Um, What, what escapes uh, but they aren't aware of that the bar or the cigarette or the glass of beer or whatever it is for them functions like a, uh, an escape mm -hmm. and now that it's taken away from them the clubs the bars all those kind of things dating for example as well like people who constantly keep dating uh, it's kind of impossible slash made a lot harder right now yeah. and all those people are at home most of them maybe alone So if you get, if you're alone at home in your mind, that you can you can literally make yourself crazy. Yeah, because you you don't like what your intuition is telling you. Your intuition yeah, you get, is telling you, yeah, this you need to deal with this. It's like it's the yeah. same. Your body is telling you that you haven't had enough water, so it gives you a headache. Yep. Your body is telling you you have stressed your muscles, so it gives you a pain. Fear. Yeah. And that's the body telling you something's wrong. The yeah. intuition is the same. Things, oh, I, I feel a bit crap. I feel a bit shit today. I feel a bit sad. Mm -hmm. It's the same It's the same method that your brain is, you know, that you're telling you that you need more water. Your brain is telling you, you need to deal with this problem. And yeah. I'm going to make sure that you understand this. And this is where, you know, mental health, you know, problems kick in. This is when anxiety happens. This is when depression happens. This yeah. is when people have breakdowns. Yeah, exactly. Because they don't listen yeah. to themselves. They, they keep know ignoring it's there. it too long. The voice is there. Yeah. Deal with deal with this. Deal with this. No, 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 no. I'm gonna do drugs and I'm gonna do girls, I'm gonna do clubbing. Like, yeah. No. Because even though you're in a loud club, the voice is still there when you go home. Yeah. That's exactly what happened to me as well. And which I found out later. Like I have never felt comfortable as an artist, as in I always felt like an outcast in some kind of way. I do know that I was uh, my, my music was doing well. I was enjoying my shows, like those hours, hour and a half yeah. were great. But somehow, as soon as I got out of uh, out of the stage, it felt uncomfortable. Like I was different than all the people uh, around me, because all the people, all those people, were interested in doing drugs and drinks, and I was like this 
quiet little kid who, yeah, I took a beer every now and then, but I never did drugs. I wasn't interested in after parties. And I always felt like this, this is not my environment. You know, this is not where I, where I'm supposed to be. But I always, like you, like you mentioned, I always neglected that thought. And I thought like, you know what, Ah, that's probably something else. Let's continue. Let's continue until after doing this for like four or five years, it brought me back to the ground. Yeah, and, and that that's what happens when you ignore yep. your body, if you when you ignore your mind, when you ignore yeah. your intuition, when you, when you ignore there is there is a tendency amongst people to do two things. Okay. The first thing that they do, and this is the majority of people, mm -hmm. they like to do the good thing. The thing that makes them feel good. Yeah. The things that gives their ego a boost. It's shopping, it's sex, it's gambling, it's, you know, all of these adrenaline things, you know, mm -hmm. many people do the good thing, the feel good thing. Very, very few people do the right thing. Exactly. There's a yeah. big, big difference between mm -hmm. knowing what's right and what's good. The right thing is not eating McDonald's every day. You know this, but damn it, it feels good. Yep, exactly. So. A lot of people on a regular basis, they they feed their ego. They feed the feel good factor. They mm. feel the, oh, this makes me feel like the dawn, like this and like that. I'm like, yeah, but you know instinctively, intuitively, that this is not the right thing for you. Yeah, yeah. So if you can shift your focus and go, right, well, this is what's right for me. I'm not saying we have to be a vegan, hippie, all that stuff. Yeah. I'm not saying that. I'm saying we need to balance it out more. Do, do the feel good thing, but then also do the right thing. Yeah. Exercise is the right thing. Mm -hmm. But many people do it because it makes you feel good. It makes you feel big and your muscles and girls like it. It's an ego thing. Yeah. Most of the time it is. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Right. But it's, it's, so, uh, it's interesting that you start that you mentioned balance because that's the main thing I've been focusing on in, in the last couple of years, balancing my life perfectly as in um i'm a person i like food i like drinks um i don't smoke i don't do drugs but i do like to have alcohol every now and then i like food i like meat i like everything but i know that working out is healthy um vegan like yeah it's healthy but i also like my meat so i want to balance those things out so a couple of days a week i eat vegan uh and a couple of days a week i eat fries pizza meat everything I want but I also work out a couple of days a week and not to become buff but just to be fit and to exercise like you mentioned yeah. and I think for me that's yeah that has opened up a lot of things like uh, you can still enjoy life and take care of yourself at the same time that's the way how I see it oh absolutely because you know balance if, if you look at if you look at the universe if you look at nature mm-hmm Everything is in balance. Yeah. Perfectly balanced. Humans are the only thing with a, with a consciousness that we know of that is out of balance. Yeah. So think think about it. You have hot and cold. You have in and out, up down, devil god, uh, left right. There's always an opposite. Mm -hmm. You ne you never only have one. Mm -hmm. You never only have happiness because happiness, always searching for happiness, is always out is also out of balance. Yeah. True. Being sad is also out of balance. We need to be calm. That is our natural state of being. Yeah. That is true balance. So being a 100% vegan, it's a choice. Mm -hmm. But is it in balance? Because yeah. you are taking something away from yourself that your body actually requires. Mm -hmm. Through millions and millions of years of development, are you in balance? Yeah. Too much yeah, working out. To see it actually, I never thought about it like that because I do agree that going. That's why I'm not 100% vegan because it doesn't feel right. I believe that over the millions of years of evolution, meat is has always been a part of that. So I don't yeah. believe it's smart to take it out of your, uh, like out of your food. Um, but it's it's an interesting way to see it. Like you want to balance those things out. Yeah. I never if thought about it like if, that. If you're going to do this, well, then do this. If yeah. you're going to have a has have a busy lifestyle mm -hmm. well then make sure that your time off is the opposite of busy yeah it's calm 
it's relaxed. If you're going to go to the if you're going to go to the gym, make sure you stretch and and make sure you take some days off. Yeah. If you're going to drink alcohol, make sure you have days where you don't drink alcohol. Mm-hmm. Be- because the body and the mind needs the balance. Mm. Going, you know, this is why, you know, don't worry, be happy has always has always annoyed me. <laughs> because the, the natural state of a human being is up and down. Mm-hmm. Sometimes we're happy, sometimes we're sad. But now you're telling me to not be sad. I'm like, well, I am. It's part of life, right? It's part of life. Yeah. Don't worry, be happy. Right? No, just be calm, be blissful. Because Mm -hmm. this is the interesting part is what you really are is this, is calm. This is your natural default setting. Why? Because every other emotion comes and goes. Happiness, sadness, anger, fear comes mm-hmm. and goes. Mm-hmm. And when happiness disappears, we become calm. When mm-hmm. anger disappears, we become calm. Yeah. So calm is what we really are. How? We are not happy. We are not sad. We are not exactly. angry. Yeah. How would you translate that to an artist, uh, to an artist's life? Because as as an artist, a successful artist, you have gigs. At those gigs, you feel like the king of the world, right? You have all those end- endorphins in your body and you feel like you can rule the world. So that's an ultimate high. But what I remember from those gigs is that there will be a moment where it drops, right? It starts to, it starts to uh, yeah, go down. And some people, I've never really had it, but some artists that I know can feel really down after a show. Well, I... That's because you are completely out of balance with regard mm-hmm. to the experience. Mm-hmm. So if you believe that you are the king of the world, you're not. <laughs> Man, reality what check. Happens, that's, it's as simple as that. You yeah. are not the king of the world. You are the king of your set for one hour yeah. or for two, for two hours. Yeah. But then after that, you are just like everyone else. Yeah, exactly. And you, you, need to, you need to accept Go out, do your thing, enjoy the energy, enjoy the vibe, but realize and remember when you go back to your hotel, you are just Joey. Yeah, just a human being. You are just a human. You are just Benjamin. You are not anything special. You have chosen to do something special with your expression. You have chosen music or art or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. That's what makes you unique. But you're not special. You're the same as the other 7.5 billion people on the planet. Yeah. The, the reason that people have this massive crash is because they believe mm. that, that they are this. Well, you're not. Yeah. I'm not saying you're not good at what you do. There's a big difference. Yeah, exactly. You know, the numbers, the facts, the figures have proven that you are successful. Mm-hmm. You have you have sales. You make money. That is a material proof that you are successful. Yeah. But but that success can can be taken away so quickly. Yeah. It's and so what cliche. happens if that gets taken away? It's so cliche, right? Because we all know this in some sort of way. You get you yeah. get told when you're really young, like everyone's the same on this planet. But still, the ego is a weird thing. Once you start feeding it, especially as an artist, the way big the bigger you get, the bigger most of the time, the bigger the ego gets, right? Okay. Because it, yeah, because yeah. it constantly constantly gets uh, um, how do you say it? Like gets it's validation. Yeah, yeah. Get, gets gets feeded by fans, by positive feedback from people that you're the best on the planet, by comments on your Instagram, by mm. from everywhere positive stuff is coming. So it, it you almost can't blame them for start thinking that they are the king of the world. Right. Course, if they're not aware of, of it, yeah, they feel they feel like they are. Yeah. But then the reason that everyone crashes is because they identify with that. Yeah, exactly. Their identity changes. That's, but it's that's, not you. Exactly. It's just something. If you okay, so look at it this way: every successful artist, every true successful. I'm talking, you know, the Rolling Stones, Michael Jackson. You know, truly successful. They have an identity. They know who they are. They've always done what they do. And the stronger your identity is, the more grounded you will become. 
Yeah. And the more pure your expression will become. And that's why Michael Jackson is unique. Mm -hmm. The Rolling Stones are unique. They don't sound like anyone else. They never did. They never will. Yeah. But we then start to think, oh, maybe I'm not so unique anymore. Maybe I need to sound like Hardwell. Maybe I need to sound like Don Diablo. Maybe I need to sound like Laidback Luke or blah, blah, blah. Oh, I should change my sound. Oh, maybe I should do this. And, you know, Carl Cox doesn't change his sound. You know, all the, 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 the true artists, they don't change their sound. Yeah, they, 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 are, they hold on to their identity. Like, this is who exactly. I am, and this is what I'm going to be for the next 80 yeah, years. This is me. And then they modulate what they do around it sure. so it fits with the market. But they don't just jump from white to black. Yeah, exactly. They go from, from white to, like, a very subtle gray. And over time, they develop. Yeah. But that's because natural, they right? They evolve yeah. as an artist. Yeah. That's natural. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, mm -hmm. yeah, and the, the, the stronger connection you have to who you really are, the the longer your career will be simple yeah. as that 100% agree like the, all the things that you, uh, you just mentioned is some of the things that i found out in the last couple of years because all the mistakes like textbook mistakes that you can make on a mental level i've made them <laughs> like almost everything i one of the biggest ch things that i had to find out is this identity thing as in i became someone else literally yeah. and that really uh scared me when i started to find it out like holy shit i actually changed people around me started saying that i changed and i was like wow this thing has impacted me on a bigger level than i expected yeah. um, exactly. and it took me quite some yeah I, i guess two years to get back to the balanced me like myself I always yeah. say like I had Joey Suki and I had Joey Ladyfeld and I started to become Joey Suki more than Joey Ladyfeld. Yeah. And right now I'm back to being Joey Ladyfeld again. So That's great. And that's a good place to be because now you're yeah. back where you started in the first place. Yeah, it is. Yeah. When you started making music, it's because you enjoyed it. Yep. Yeah. You, you had dreams. You wanted to achieve something, but also because you actually really liked it. That's yeah. why. Exactly. And you would be happy if someone signed it or not, but you still make lots of music anyway. Yeah, exactly. I, I, I know you. I know you, Dutch guys. You work so hard; it's ridiculous. <laughs> I spent um, so many hours in the studio. It's uh, it was fun because I'm here uh, in the building where I am. Fire Beats is located here as well. Oh yeah, you know them as well, right? Because yeah, 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 I think yeah. we've actually released a collaboration on your label. Yeah, you, you did. Yeah, yeah, many years did. ago. Like one of our first collaborations, uh, and Epster was here as well. Uh, oh, okay. And when I started making music back in the days in my uh, bedroom, I was working with Epster. Like every single day he came to my studio. We worked from about 10 till 6, 10 to 5, every single day. And we released so many music at that time, like so many tracks. Ah, and I remember. We, and we, had, remember. we just had fun. You know, that was the thing. We had a great bond. We made so many great music and we didn't even think about how many time it costs us. No. And then what happens? Ooh, a tiny bit of success. Mm. Oh, yeah. But then, you know, the label wants us to, like, re-edit this. And, oh, can you make this drop that? And, oh, you know, yeah, it's not quite the sound that we want. But you really want to sign to the label. So you're kind of thinking, right, well, what do they want? Let's go in. And yep. I've been there. I've done it. Destructive. Destructive. Oh. And, and, and that's why really? I'm so happy that, that right now, I mean, I've put myself in a position to help people with those things. Mm. Because a decision like that, the, the, the example that you've just given, like signing a record deal in the beginning of your career, sounds so simple. By the way, I'm sorry for the restructuring oh, yeah, sounds. No. Right. Um, but it sounds so simple, like, oh, I'm getting this deal and they ask me to change something in my song, blah, 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 blah. And right now, when I, when I coach artists in that stage of their career, they're like, oh, yeah, let's get this thing signed. Well, I say, are you really sure? Like, is this yeah, really the yeah. smartest thing you can do? Because it's, it might be short-term short, short -term success, but when you take it to the long-term, it can really, well, redirect you from your own path. Yeah, it's, it's that compromising too much. Yeah, exactly. You know, a couple of edits, change a baseline, up and down a few notes, fine. Not a big problem. Yeah, because exactly. the overall identity of what you're making 
is the same. It's yeah. fine. If you want to put a vocal on it, great. It doesn't change what I've done. Yeah. But what happens with a lot of labels is they ask you to, you know, can you restructure this? I'm like, but then it's not the same track. But then you're so desperate to sign that you end up like, you do a bass house track, you do an EDM track, you do a tech house track yeah. under the same name. Yeah. I'm kind of like, Who's this who guy? Who are you? Yeah. What, what, what do you stand for? Are you tech house? Are you bass house? Are you UDM? Are you groove? Are you deep? What, what are you? Yeah. If you don't know, your fans won't know. Exactly. Because your and fans want consistency, you know, like they expect consistency because they expect an identity. Yeah. They it, at least give them a feeling. Like, for example, people ask me, what does Kid Master stand for? I say Kid Massive stands for energy. It stands for fun, uplifting, something that is you know something you can enjoy listening to it's not necessarily a genre it's not like i only make tech house yeah. but no i make tech house i make a bit of soft future house i make some you know latin house but if you hear my dj set i play all of it yeah and the, the energy the red line is the same this yeah. is my kid massive sound it's not a style anymore yeah <laughs> as it happens it all fits together yeah So it's not like EDM, trap, country and western. I'm like what? <laughs> like, what the happened? fuck happened there? <laughs> What's this? I'm like no. For me, it's a feeling. It's an emotion. Mm. And the other project I have is called Wolf Crew. So I, I define it this way. So Wolf Crew is my my Sunday. Mm -hmm. Kid Massive is my Saturday. So if I feel the urge to make something emotional, I do it with Wolf Crew. If I feel the urge to do something punchy, yeah. I do it as Kid Massive. It's it's crazy to hear how many similarities we have because uh, even in this story, you know, like at a certain point in my career, I also felt that I always have a, have had a great passion for like slow music, like chill music. Mm -hmm. So I started making chill music as well under a different alias, which not a lot of people know, but it's called Ikis. So Suki okay. in, in in backwards. Ah, totally. uh, so it's literally the other side of Joey Suki, okay. uh, which is like chill music. And what I noticed is, especially at that period of time, I uh, loved making that music, that kind of music, much more than I was doing with EDM. I know, right? It's and I was crazy. Like, what It's the fuck. I know, I know. Because you sit down and you write some really nice chords and you just loop these chords. Exactly. Emotion and, in uh, it. Yeah, exactly. And I'm like, wow, this is great. And it just makes you feel good. It takes you right back to what music is. Music yeah. is a feeling. House music is a feeling. And it's yeah. true. It is. Yeah. If that feeling is not there, then it's just a product. There's yeah. nothing wrong with doing a product, but then but then know it's a product and make a product and be okay with a product. Yeah. But, be okay with selling it as well. Yeah. Be, if, if you want to make money, great. Make mm -hmm. money. If you want to be, you know, these big top 100 EDM DJs, great. Do it. But be happy with it. Yeah, exactly. Accept, accept it. Don't do it because, you know, oh, you know, I want to make some quick money. But yeah, I can guarantee you in five years time, your career is over. Yeah. 100%. <laughs> yeah. Um, knowing that you've been working on this uh, whole mindset, mental side uh, as well for a couple of years, how would you advise someone um, who doesn't know anything about what we've talked about in the last couple of 40 minutes? How would you advise them to get started? Because it's a jungle out there with all those books, with all those podcasts, with educations. What's a simple way? Maybe you can tell how you got in uh, in this whole thing, how you get started. Well, I actually, uh, I, I, I answered a question very similar to this recently. And the answer is, is quite simple. If you know what you're looking for, you can find it. Mm -hmm. So if you, um, it's, very, it's very simple. The answer is in the question. You ask a question, but you already, you already know the answer. <laughs> so why am I overweight? That's the question. Because okay. you're overweight. Because you don't eat properly. You don't yeah. exercise. You're stressed. You're worried. But you already know why you're overweight. You just haven't sat down and thought about, well, yeah. why am I overweight? Because you're so busy distracting yourself with noise and this and that and girls and blah, blah, blah. Well, Why do I want this? Okay, so if you want a career, 
then ask yourself, well, what do I need to have a career? Right. Well, I need I need to know what I want. Who am I? Starters, for starters, yeah. Starting point. What genre of music do I want to make? Mm-hmm. Yeah. The more you learn about yourself from a basic point of view, what do you like? Why do you like it? What would happen if you don't have it? Then you can start looking and going, okay, well, what music do I like? What music do I enjoy? Okay, right, I like I like this music. Okay, well, who's this guy? You read and you go, oh, right, so this guy does this. You know, like Cascade, for example. Mm-hmm. Cascade is a wonderful human being, super calm, super chilled. If you want to see how to become a mega superstar DJ, look at Cascade. <laughs> That's the example. That's a great example. Be inspired by people that inspire you. Yeah. Read, read their biographies. Where did they come from? Mm-hmm. Where do, what do they study? You know, and then all of a sudden, go to your library. Yeah. And then look in the self-help section and go, right, well, how do I learn? What is coaching? I don't know. Yeah. How does it work? Yeah. So Maybe. but everything starts from you. Yeah. What do you want? If you don't know what you want, how are you going to get it? Yeah, exactly. Simple. Yeah. And maybe something to add on that for me as well, uh, from my perspective, is that getting started is like a big hurdle, you know. And what really helped me is that I never liked reading books in my whole life. I Just reading books didn't fit me in some kind of way. So I, after a while, I found out that, that audiobooks were a thing. Like that was yeah. completely new to me. And once I found out that I could actually listen to books... Since then, I started like crushing them on the go yeah. because it's just like listening is way more natural to me. And I can imagine that for a lot of artists, listening kind of seems like a natural thing to do as well. The way how they uh, consume the, the content. Um, so don't push yourself into the position to read if you just don't like reading. You know, you can exactly also do that. Yeah, you can yeah. also do re- listening. Yeah, do what works for you. You know, I, I've, I've read a lot and now, you know, I, I do a lot of, I, I read a lot of stuff. Well, I don't read. I listen to a lot of stuff on YouTube and things like that. And, you know, it, it depends how I feel. Yeah, true. You know, sometimes I feel like reading, so I'm going to read. And, you know, I, in the beginning, so about seven, eight years ago, I did a lot of courses on like uh, psychology, therapy, mm-hmm. like that. And to get an understanding about how that works, I'm also very interested in quantum mechanics, quantum physics. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm interested in how does the universe on a scientific level work? Okay, so yeah. now I, I, I have a reasonable understanding of, of how things work. And then I thought, well, something's missing. And that is the, um, the alternative approach. Some mm-hmm. would call it the spiritual approach. I call it an alternative insight. So for example, the, the, the basic, mindfulness is a buddhistic uh you know uh, idea that's been around for like two thousand years Mm -hmm. so if buddhism can come up with a concept like mindfulness which we can adopt today which we which we know works what else do they have what other things what other secrets do they have acupuncture for example no one knows how acupuncture really works but it works (laughs) so I like going down that route and going, okay, right, well, this is how far science has got. But how far is the alternative science? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And then you, you, you start to realize, well, I am not who I think I am. I am not my ego. I am not. Why am I searching for money? Why am I so this is yeah. this doesn't actually make me happy. This doesn't give me anything. Yeah. But society today is so much you must have this and this and this to be successful. Yeah, true. If you look at a if you look at a Buddhist monk, is he successful? Yes. But he doesn't have possessions, but he's successful in calming his mind and being balanced. Yeah. Which is ultimately what we're all looking for. Yeah. But we try to do it but with buying the newest phone and getting the newest TV and all those kind yeah. of things. Yeah. Yeah. Buy a phone if you need a phone. Buy a laptop if you need a laptop. It's fine. Nothing wrong with having sure. things. Yeah. But it's it's recognizing it's just a thing. Mm-hmm. It doesn't define you. Having a number one record on Beatport is just a thing. You are yeah. not the only one. You will not be the only one. It's celebrate it yeah. and move on. I, I mean, on the, 
you know. Yeah, I really think that asking the question why to yourself really helps, you know, like, for example, if you get that number one song and you feel like that does something to you, you can ask yourself, like, why do I feel like I feel right now? Why is this so important to me? Or why do I start acting different once I become successful? All those yeah. kind of things. And what I noticed as well, do you, are you familiar with uh, neuro-linguistic programming? And I'll I am, be, yeah. Okay, yeah. I've done a study on that. And what I've found really interesting as well um, is the whole thing, like your, your luggage from the past, what, mm. what that does to you, you know? All the things you've learned from your, edu from your um, um, what's the word, which you get from your parents. Um, the programming? No, the, how they bring you up, how do what they teach you? Oh, the um, yeah, as well. I know you, what you mean. How do you how do you call it? It's what? your. I know I know what you mean, but for the for the listeners' benefit, maybe we should try and define it. Yeah. It's the uh, the nurture. Yeah, like like what they teach you how to how to live your life. You know, your parents yeah. in the beginning of your life are your mentors. Uh, and they tell you like, hey, you should act like this. These are good yeah. people. These are bad people. Uh, this works. This doesn't work. And as a kid, you kind of copy paste all those things without yeah, even yeah, thinking yeah. about it. Yeah. But once you become older, you still have those behavioral uh, things, but you don't really understand why, because it's your parents' behavior. It's not necessarily yeah. how you are as a person. Yeah. And at a certain age, what I noticed is those things start to cringe inside you. You feel like, hey... Because I'm, you know it's not you. Exactly. You you just know you just uh, notice like, hey, I'm acting like this, but something inside me tells me I want it to do differently, mm. and then you start thinking like, hey, my parents actually do it like that. I learned it to do it like that, yeah. but that's yeah. not the way how I, how I want to do it. And those kind of insights just really make your life so much easier, in my opinion. Oh yeah, yeah. It's like knowing you are not your parents. Yep. Okay. Uh, and, the, and, and the thing is, it's like, this might be a bit controversial, but there's so many parents that shouldn't have kids. Yeah, I totally Sim agree. Simply because it's an ego thing. Yeah. Pa parents are not there to tell you what to do. They are simply to guide you. This is mm -hmm. hot, this is cold, this is sharp. Not to say, you have to like this, you need to study this, we don't yeah. like that, you shouldn't do this. Then all of a sudden, because think about it, as children, we are completely blank. We are white. Yeah. We are pure. If you, if you look at children, if you put 10 children together, you know, at the age of five, in two minutes, they're all playing together. They don't care what age, what yep. color. They, if they just play together. You put 10 adults together at the age of 30. Uh -uh. Yeah. Why? Because, oh, well, I don't like what he's wearing. Or I don't like him because he's brown. Yeah. I don't like her because of this. And. And all of a sudden, you're, you are now uh, focused on the upbringing that you've been given. Yeah. Your, pro your programming. Exactly, yeah. Your programming. And it's so sad to see. Yeah, yeah but that's, this, that's, is, this is life. This is yeah, but that's, what, we, that's this so is what we need to learn to come over. Yeah, that's yeah. so interesting to me. You know, like the, the example you just gave from the, from the babies, you never think about those things. You never think about that we just get born completely neutral and everything that our parents or our, or our environment and experiences uh, change, change our personality. We bring it along with us during our whole life and it changes the way you look at the world and the way you look at other people. And that's why it's so important to, yeah, be in an environment around people who guide you and not tell you what to do and that's yeah. why I'm so grateful to have my parents because they completely uh, let me free in making the, 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 the decisions mm. uh, even when I wanted to leave school because I wanted to pursue my music career they let me go they said like if you think you can do this just do it yeah looking back at it that was a crucial moment in my life yeah. if my if my parents I, I had, yeah I, sorry, I had something similar. Mm -hmm. My mom said to me from a very young age, I don't remember exactly, but I was young. She said, you can do anything you want, but it's your responsibility. Yep. Which means she has now given me the burden of carrying all my own shit. Yeah. So if I'm going to do something bad, well, it's on me. 
Yeah. She'll help me. She'll support me. But she made me realize it's my decision. If yeah. I want to do that, well, then I also have to be happy with the consequence of that. Yeah. So she kind of pushed back the power onto myself. Mm. And that's always stuck with me. So which means I never went too far with anything. Yeah. I never was too crazy because I always knew it's on me. Yeah. And that's guiding. Yeah. It's weird, right? How, how one little sentence can influence your life so much. It's crazy. Yeah, yeah. it's huge. You know, and and to, to everyone, you know, watching this and listening to this, ask yourself, have your parents said anything similar to you? Mm -hmm. And if they have, maybe think about it. What does it mean to you? You know, because there are lots of things that happen in our lives that we don't pay attention to. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so many important things that we just don't notice. An easy way to find out that how that works is that if you look at something, focus on one thing, but realize that there are so many things that are there as well, but you just don't see it. Like right now, I look at you, but there's a ton of things happening around me. But yeah. I'm just not aware of it. And that's what what's in life in general. There's so many things happening, but you just can have, you only have one focus. Yeah. So it's it's really hard to, yeah, maybe mindfulness can help with that, to bring focus on the things that really matter. Um, Because, you know, we, we, we all have, you know, we all have, I, I, I read something. This is actually really interesting. Um, average per day, we have about 60,000 thoughts. Mm -hmm. per day right and out of those 60,000 thoughts the majority of people only have five percent new thoughts five percent so 95 percent is repetitive from yesterday <laughs> the way you brush your teeth the way you do your hair the way you sit down the way you stir yeah. your coffee it's it's all the same behavior as yesterday it's habits right you create habits yeah so for the majority of people They only create 5% new habits. So imagine if you're consciously aware of what you're doing, then you could say, okay, right, well, I'm going to do something different today. I'm going to walk this way, or I'm going to turn my phone off. And all of a sudden, you've now gone from 5% to 10%. Yeah. yeah And yeah. what happens when you, when you challenge your brain is you start new synapses. Your brain increases, it grows. It's like a muscle. Yeah. The more you use it, the bigger it gets. It's, it's, oh man, again, similarities. It's interesting, it. right? Uh, last year, I've read the book Atomic Hobbits, uh, Hobbits, Habits, sorry. <laughs> Atomic Atomic Hobbits. Hobbits. I, don't, I don't know that one. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> but uh, it's a book about uh, habits, obviously, and not hobbits. Uh, but ever since then, uh, they, they explain this, what you just explained as well, but way deeper. And ever since then, I started noticing, like, hey, let's break a couple of simple habits every day. Uh, mm -hmm. Simply like not driving the same way to work towards my office every day. Take a different road. Mm -hmm. Just just take a different road and see how that works for you. Because yeah. you might just get way more energized or way more focused or way more. I don't know what could happen, but it, you you break habits. And exactly. It's it's as simply totally. it's as simply as having the same seat at your at your uh, dining table at home. Like most people sit at the same seat every day. I try to sit on a different chair every day. It, it sounds so weird, but it, it freshens up your morning. Like you're like, oh, it's a different it, it corner. Does. Like, oh, yeah, <laughs> it does. It, it gives you a new perspective, and you know, and, and that's something that I also do as a music producer. So yeah. I do a lot of I do a lot of work, production work with Loopmasters, mm -hmm. and I, I produce a lot of their their packs, and I I suggest ideas to them. I say, listen, do you want this? And they're like, okay, cool. Can you deliver? I was like, yeah, cool. And I'm thinking, fuck, how do I do this? <laughs> I, I, I don't know how to make trap, for example. Yeah. But what I will do is I will learn how to make it. Exactly. Because yeah. I have the technical ability to make anything. I just don't know how to make trap, the genre, but I yeah. know how to program it. Exactly. So for me, it's like, okay, well, I don't know how to do it, but you know what? I'm going to give it a shot. I'm going to yeah. try And in 2018, I was their number one selling in-house producer at Loopmasters. That's great. I did, I did Psytrance, I did Trap, I did Tropical House, <laughs> I did Ber Berlin Dub Techno, I did like uh, Jazzy Hip Hop, I did Soulful House. Yeah. I, I, I did not do any EDM, I didn't do any Tech House, I didn't do any Future House. Yeah. 
I did everything else other than what I normally do. And as a producer, that means, boom, my my knowledge just expanded. Yeah, and creativity as well, because you get different oh. insights, new yeah. insights. Massively, and yeah. it, you know, it helped it helped my bank my bank account. It helped my creativity. Yeah. It helped me just to have something to do. Like, yeah. okay, right, well, I can make tech house with my eyes shut. Not a challenge. Yeah. But this, I don't know how to do that. It doesn't mean I want to become, you know, a tropical house producer. I'm not interested. Yeah. But it's the process behind something new. And like you just said, changing your habit. Yeah. You, because you making know, tech house became a habit to you. Like you, like you uh, mentioned, uh, I can do it with my eyes yeah. shut. It's a habit. You know, you have your, your go-to plugin. You have your go-to yeah. sample space. And, you, you know, you have your structure. You can make a track. You know, I'm sure you were the same as well at one point in your career. Yeah. You could just sit down and knock out, you know, a, a track super quick. Yeah, a couple of hours. You, well, well, done. You knew exactly where it all sat. Yeah. But the creativity was gone because it's just yeah. a habit. And the challenge was gone because it's not yeah, you you've evolved as a producer uh, where you are at the level where you just can do it with your eyes closed. But yeah. there's no goal anymore. Like there's no challenge anymore. And that's what I was missing as well. I, I stopped challenging myself in the studio eventually. And that's just yeah. boring. Oh, no, completely. And yeah. you know, sometimes if, if, if I want a challenge, I make Latin house. So I, I work with a really talented musician and I make like a full on like you know with live percussion and bass and you know just because i just want something different you know yeah. I've, i've started to make soulful house again nice. you know i've started yeah. to do a couple of like disco house remixes and yeah. just because it's 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 still house music it still fits with my style yeah and i i, re I really like it so for me it's like oh this is actually quite fun and then i have my wolf crew project Mm -hmm. which is when I feel a bit like low, I feel a bit melancholic, I feel a bit blue. You know, it's Sunday night, it's 9 p.m. I don't want to watch TV. Right. I'm going to work on this. Yeah. So, you might have inspired me to start making music again, just to give it a try. <laughs> have fun with it. Just sit yeah. down, ask yourself, you know, what do you what do you like? What do you enjoy? Because I know you, your, your stuff is, is technically great, really good, really, right. really good. So it's not the technical aspect. That's there. That's done. Oh, that's the creative part. Yeah. Now it's you tapping into well, what is Joey like? Yeah. You know. True. That's the big question. <laughs> you know. And but that's the fun part, right? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. True. It's like, yeah. what what do I want to do? I don't know. Uh, listen, uh, Benjamin. I feel like we can talk for hours because we have so many things in common and. Um, They, they start to uh, build again on the background. But I feel like we could talk for hours, but we've already reached almost an hour. Um, so I suggest uh, we, we stop for now. But uh, I really want to thank you for sharing all the knowledge and experience that you've had. Uh, it was a pleasure for me to talk with a like-minded person. And uh, okay. I've, learned, I've learned as well. So that's great. Let's stay in touch. And uh, where can people find something about you? Is it online, Instagram? Yeah, so simply just the mindset sessions. It's mm -hmm. on Facebook, Instagram. Um, my podcast is available on uh, Spotify, iTunes, everywhere. So, and I also repost a lot of the stuff on my Kid Massive socials as well. So you can always find it. So perfect, perfect. Thanks again, and uh, Thank we'll you. stay in touch. All right, man. Sounds good. <laughs>